Bill Bear, thanks for uh, the time you're giving us this week uh, on this special series we're doing. Appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about the business of cannabis and, and some of the unanswered questions. First, uh, we have the C.D. Howe Institute saying at best there will only be enough legal supply uh, to meet 60 percent of the cannabis market in the first six months. What does that do to your objective of shutting down the black market and pot if people can't get it through the legal means? Well, I've, I've relied on Health Canada, which, which works very closely with the now 129 licensed producers in Canada. Um, in the last year, they've increased their growing capacity among those licensed producers almost 600 percent. And, and so I think the, the, the data that C.D. Howe might have been relying on was a little dated. Um, having said that, you know, we anticipate that, you know, because, out of curiosity, the first few weeks of, of, of uh, cannabis legal availability in, in a legal market, there might be a bit of a surge in, in demand. But people have been preparing for this for, for a considerable period of time. You know, we went to the provinces and territories and said, how much time do you need mm. to be ready to have stock on the shelves and, and to have sufficient supply? And they said 8 to 12 weeks. We gave them 17 weeks in order to make sure that they were ready. There, there may be, by the way, a, a store or a place where, f for a number of different reasons, they've had trouble getting stock to the shelf, but I believe that there will be sufficient supply. Uh, C.D. Howe also says you, you could speed up the licensing process. They said that's one of the issues. Speed up licensing and, they say, make edibles uh, legal more quickly because that'll pull consumers away from the black market. Why not do that? Well, again, it, 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 it's, it's striking the balance between maintaining the health and safety of Canadians, which is our first priority, it has to always be our first priority, and facilitating this new legal market. You know, and, and I understand, you know, we've placed very strict restrictions on advertising and promotion, just as an example. The industry would like to be able to promote their, their sales to increase their sales. But, but let me be very clear, Peter, it is not the government's intention to promote or normalize the use of this substance. We're regulating it. We're putting in appropriate controls to protect the health and safety of, of Canadians, to keep our kids safe, and to, and to eliminate this black market. And, and, and yes, we want this industry to, to be successful, but we want them to follow the rules. And the rules are intended to protect Canadians. Well, what about, what, I mean, we're going to start out with a, a bit of a mishmash of rules across the country, where you can smoke it, where you can buy it, how much you can grow. It's different in, in different places. Um, are you okay with that? Is, that? is that what you hoped would happen when, when, when it got rolled out, that there'd be all kinds of different rules everywhere in Canada for how you can buy it? And, and, well, I, I'll tell you, I've, for, for the last two and a half years, I've worked really closely with the provinces and territories. I've been working with municipalities across the country. You know, we, we go and look at how they regulate other substances and, and frankly, alcohol. You know, we've got a century of, of regulating alcohol mm -hmm. experience in this country, and yet each of the provinces and territories does it somewhat differently. There is some consistency. Like They all make the effort, as I hope they will continue to do with cannabis, to make sure the cannabis, like alcohol, is not sold to kids and available to kids. They, 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 they have different ways in which that's done. There's a different age of majority in different right. provinces, um, different... Uh, uh, retail environments yeah. that are being established, but when we went to them, it was with the understanding that, that first of all, they had the jurisdiction and the authority. But it's it's not just a, a matter of law; it's also a matter of of context. You know, I will tell you, BC is very different than Prince Edward Island, mm -hmm. and Saskatchewan has a different experience than Newfoundland. And so, working with the provinces and territories so that they could write regulations that suit their community made a great deal of sense. In my was opinion. there ever going to be was there ever going to be a one size fits all? approach to legalization. I have to tell you, I, I considered it right at the outset, but it became quite apparent to me as I traveled across the country and went to juri di different jurisdictions, there were different expectations, different states of readiness, right. you know, different social standards in different places in this country, and you have to respect that. You know, there are some municipalities that, you know, want to ensure that it's, it's very strictly controlled and regulated. Other places have a different expectation. Let's talk about the rules of advertising and marketing. Cannabis products cannot be advertised to minors. There can't be any form of advertising where minors can see it. Some companies, though, have already been warned by Health Canada for pushing the envelope uh, with billboards, digital ads, websites, sponsorship and music events, and so on. Uh, what's your message to cannabis companies? The rules are, have been developed with a very clear purpose in mind. And, and, they, and I think they reflect the government and Canadians' priorities of protecting their kids. You know, I understand why, you know, the business community would want to push the envelope a little bit and, and to maximize their sales, but that is not our intention. Our intention is to make sure that, that we do the right things in, in protecting our kids. We're not, again, trying to, to normalize this drug. This is about displacing an illicit market and protecting the health and safety of Canadians. Right, but for each of those companies, they make the case that, look, we're... we're, we're 
we're providing information and not just our product we're providing information but you know if, if you want the legal market to do well they make the case for market share companies have to grow they have to you know uh, create profit invest in different products and so on uh, what about that argument that you have to let us do what we need to do to grow market share and become successful you know we've tried to strike a balance in in supporting the business community so that they can be successful because these these companies are employing Canadians they're creating growth in in our economy and and and, and I think done right that, that there's a real value that, that they can contribute to this thing and we want those companies to be successful but at the same time we're also trying to strike that balance in, in, in placing reasonable limits and and you know we've learned from the experience of tobacco Peter and I think that's mm. that's a good one you know at one time it was pretty wide open with respect to the the promotion and sale of tobacco a lot of misinformation uh, was 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 put forward we now have a very strict regulatory control over that and we've learned from that experience and and frankly if our aim is to make sure that that not only the kids is their access restricted to this but that there's a lower demand among our kids for the for this substance we've had a lot of success with placing reasonable limits on the promotion of tobacco and we're learning from that experience and applying it to cannabis you're sharing you're sharing the excise tax with the provinces giving them 75 percent of it but uh, they in some places there's still no deals in place with municipalities to pass some of that money on from the provinces so municipalities can deal with this uh, can you envision a framework that the feds would impose to say look you have to do this for municipalities so that they can they can manage legalization because there's lots of costs for Peter, that. I can tell you that we tried very hard in the discussions with the provinces in establishing that cannabis taxation framework. When we came to a determination of the 75-25 split, it was clearly um, our, our hope that that meant that some of those revenues would be would be pushed municipalities. Um, frankly, I'm a little bit concerned. I don't. I think that's part of the municipal-provincial relationship, mm -hmm. and there is a, 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 a clear constitutional relationship between municipalities and provinces. And and, and to the extent possible, I leave it to them to, to work that out. But I'll continue to encourage uh, the provinces to support municipalities who have costs. And, I, and we're, I'm engaged in discussions with mayors and with municipal associations across the country to continue to help them get the resources they need to do the job that we need them to do. Cannabis dispensaries are being told they got to shut down and you know they, they, they if they want to be part of the legal market they have to shut down and then come back uh, and, and apply for license and so on. How come? Why not just fold them into a new new regime in this country? Because it's really important that whoever is responsible for the production and distribution of cannabis in this country is willing to follow the rules. The rules mean something. They were put in place to affect an important purpose and and for a lot of those companies they've operated outside of the law and they have ignored every rule. They refuse to be accountable to, to, to any, any kind of oversight. Um, their products are untested and, and, and unregulated. They've, they've been motivated entirely by profit. And I think there's an expectation that anybody that gets a license to get into this business is going to have to follow the rules, be, be transparent, be accountable, um, and in order to ensure, be able to, for us to be able to assure Canadians that, that, that the rules are being followed and, and, and so I think it's I, I think it's entirely appropriate uh, the effort that is now being made to, to shut those down we can either do that through enforcement or through other types of incentives and, and, and whatever whatever makes that regulated environment safe and rule-based I think is the right way to go forward. Bill Blair thanks again. Thank you Peter.